A buzz bar is simply a solid conductor which connects all of the feeders, incomers and other circuits together. Here's a typical example of a buzz bar in a metal clad switchgear board. It carries all of the current that enters that part of the electrical system. They are normally made of copper or aluminium and are defined by the following current ratings. The continuous current carrying capacity. This is the maximum current that the buzz bar can carry before exceeding the maximum defined temperature rise, normally set at 70 degrees Celsius. It is defined by the maximum required current carrying capacity of all of the sources connected to the buzz bar, including transformers, overhead lines and cables. Most buzz bars on the electrical system range in capacity from 100 amps all the way through to 4000 amps. Let's now see how we size a typical bus bar. Here we have a 132 to 11 kV transformer rated at 20 MVA feeding a bus bar through an incomer. The maximum current that will be fed into the bus bar will depend on the power rating of the transformer. As we know, the power of the transformer equals root 3 times by its maximum voltage and current ratings. Therefore, the maximum current equals the power rating divided by root 3 times by its voltage rating. For this transformer T1, the current equals the maximum rating which is 20 MVA divided by root 3 times by its maximum voltage which is 11 kV. The maximum current is 1050 amps which is the peak current that will flow through the bus bar. The bus bar manufacturers make them in standard ratings. Looking down the table, the bus bar we should choose for this application is 1250 amps. As the bus bar is rated at 1250 amps, we normally give the transformer incomer circuit breaker the same rating. Let's now look at two transformers feeding a bus bar. We've now set the circuit breaker rating for each transformer at 1250 amps, based on the maximum current rating for each transformer. What rating should we give the bus bar? Well, the current for each transformer is 1050 amps, so obviously two transformers is 2100 amps. Looking at our standard bus bar rating table, the bus bar to choose is the one above this rating. Therefore, we'll choose a bus bar rating of 2500 amps. What do we do when there's a bus section breaker? Well, we normally make this the same rating as the bus bar, which is 2,500 amps. Let's do a worked example. For the arrangement shown, calculate the rating of the bus bars and the current ratings of the incomer and bus section breakers. First, let's work out the peak current produced by each of the transformers. As per the previous equation, the current equals the power divided by root 3 times by the voltage. The current therefore equals 155 MVA, which is the maximum transformer rating, divided by root 3 times by the secondary voltage, which is 132 kV. Therefore, each transformer contributes a maximum of 678 amps. Each incomer circuit breaker needs to carry this current. Looking down the standard rating table for circuit breakers, let's choose an 800 amp rating. Next, let's look at the bus bar rating. It's important that when we're sizing the bus bar, we include all future transformers in this calculation, as it's very difficult and expensive to change the bus bars at a later date. So for this example, we have three transformers, each carrying 678 amps. This gives a grand total of 2034 amps. Looking down the table again, the correct bus bar rating to choose is therefore 2500 amps. What about the rating of the bus section breaker? Well, 
this will cover the same current as the buzz bar. Therefore, let's rate it at 2500 amps as well. We've now sized all of the equipment. Very often, you will see designs run the incomers and bus sections have the same rating. This is done as the purchase cost of similar sized circuit breakers can be minimal. And it also avoids having multiple circuit breaker ratings on the same switchboard. This keeps the cost of spares down and allows circuit breakers to be switched around between circuits when one of them fails. The other main element we use to define buzz bars is the fault current rating. This is the maximum fault current that the buzz bar can carry for a defined period, usually one second. All fault current on the electrical system is created by the generators, but the transformers naturally limit the fault current that passes through them. If we want to calculate the fault current that an individual transformer contributes to the electrical system when a three-phase short circuit occurs, we can do this by knowing the transformer impedance. Here's a rating plate for a 100 kVA, 11,000 to 415 volt transformer. As we can see, for this transformer, the impedance is 4%. How do we use this information? Well, here's our transformer off the rating plate. The short circuit current equals 100 divided by the transformer percentage impedance multiplied by the transformer's rated secondary current. From our previous equations, the secondary current equals the transformer rating which in this case is 100 kVA, divided by root 3 times by the secondary voltage, which in our case is 415 volts. This gives a secondary rated current of 139.3 amps. Putting this in our equation, the short circuit current equals 100, divided by the transformer impedance, which in our case is 4%. This is multiplied by the secondary rated current, which gives a short circuit current of 3,482 amps. Or we could just say the short circuit current is 25 times the rated current. This means that if you get a three phase fault on the buzz bar, the transformer will feed 3,482 amps into the fault. We obviously want to minimise the chance of a fault occurring, and switchgear manufacturers use many methods to achieve this. These include using insulated buzz bars. For these type of buzz bars, we coat a copper or aluminium conductor in a plastic coating, which will minimise the chance of the buzz bar arcing across to the grounded housing. The other technique that manufacturers use is buzz bar segregation. This is where the red, yellow and blue buzz bars are all housed in separate grounded channels, which will obviously minimise the chance of a face-to-face -face fault occurring. Transformers are designed to have a defined impedance as the network operators need to know what the fault currents produced by the transformers are. If you want a low fault current, you design the transformer to have a high impedance and vice versa. There are obvious limitations to the impedance you can achieve for the transformer design, as it also depends on its configuration and the materials used. And it may be just too expensive or impractical to make a transformer with the impedance that you would like. Generally, larger transformers on a transmission network naturally tend to have a lower impedance due to their design than smaller distribution transformers 